Hi everyone, if you're just joining us, we're just gonna give a moment uh, to see if anyone else is going to join us. We'll get started in just a moment. If there is uh, any topic or question that you specifically want to cover this afternoon, uh, feel free to write it in the chat box. I'll take a look and I'll make sure that we address it as soon as we get started. This program is also uh, being streamed on YouTube, YouTube Live at the same time. So we might get some questions coming in from there as well. We'll just give it another two minutes just to see if anybody else is going to be joining in. Okay, I think we're gonna get started. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Danielle Melia. I am a school media specialist. I also have worked as a public librarian and I'm also a Google trainer. Um, today I was um, brought here by the Middle Country Public Library to discuss how to make uh, distance learning and specifically Google Classroom accessible for students with different abilities. Um, luckily, we live in a time where there are a lot of options out there. Um, and I created a list of those that I felt were probably um, the most commonly needed accessible features, as well as some of the ones that I feel are best suited for students during this time. If at any time you have any questions at all, I want to make sure that you leave this session um, with those questions answered, first and foremost. So you can um, just write your message in the chat box, and I will make sure that I address them. 
if it's a lot to type or if it's a little confusing, that's fine. Um, you can also request to have your microphone unmuted and you can just ask the question if that's easier. So we do have a question um, before we even get started, which is great about, um, can anyone with a Gmail account access Google Classroom? because sometimes activities are on that platform. So the way that Google Classroom actually works is yes, anybody with a Gmail account can have access to Google Classroom. However, it depends on who created the Google Classroom. So if it's your school district that created your Google Classroom, most likely the school district's Google Classroom is set up so that only students of that school district can enter. So um, the person who wrote that question, um, I'm not sure if you want to elaborate or not, um, but if it is a classroom that's set up by a public organization, usually they have it set up so that you can access it with a regular Gmail account. But if it's a private institution, it would only belong to the people in that organization. It was an outside. So you should be able to access it through a Gmail account. If it's telling you it's not, you'd actually get a pop-up box that says this organization does not allow users from this domain. Um, okay, you might need to register. Um, but if it does not allow you in and it's an outside organization, then I would just shoot them an email and ask them um, what the credentials are because it is up to the organization that's creating the Google Classroom. Actually, anyone with a Gmail account can create a Google Classroom. My children create Google Classrooms for me and give me homework all the time <laughs> just to play around. They play teacher um, with it. So it is definitely something that's open to everyone, but doesn't have to be. So um, I hope that answered your question. Uh, moving forward, I created a, uh, a document that I will actually give everybody access to. I'm going to copy and paste this link into the chat box. And let me just make sure it goes to everyone here. So here's the link, but you don't need to click on it now. What I suggest you would you do is just kind of save the link for later or at the end of the session, um, we can post the link again so that you have it and you can save it. But this is the document that I'm going to be working off of today. And again, at any time, if, I have, if you have any questions at all, please don't feel like you're interrupting me. Um, I, that's what I'm here for. I want to make sure that you walk away with the information that you need to make distance learning accessible for your student. Um, <clears throat> so the very first thing that I want to mention is that we're really, really fortunate um, that most devices these days actually come with their own accessibility features. Um, I do have some links here on this document for different types of devices. So I have um, a link on how to make Windows 10 accessible, a link on iOS, which would cover any Apple products, an iPhone, an iPad, and Chromebook. And I'm going to go over those later, but I want to make sure that we have time for the other features that I want to share with you today. So I'm going to save those for later. So I divided up this document by the type of um, ability that the child may or may not have access to. And the very first one that I feel I get the most questions about is they need things re read aloud to them, right? A lot of students have this accommodation, whether they have just every, you know any kind of reading comprehension assignment read aloud to, hit, to them. Some, some students have um, accommodations to have tests read aloud to them. And that's really important. And that puts a lot of pressure on parents when they need every single thing read aloud to their child all day long, especially if that parent, you know, you have other things going on. So there are quite a few options for uh, text to speech. Um, this is actually something that is available, again, uh, on individual devices, but I want to also go over what a Chrome extension is, because this opens a lot of doors. 
If you use a Chrome browser, which is actually the best browser to use anyway, if you're using Google products, because Chrome is actually a Google product itself. So it's meant to work seamlessly with those other uh, apps and products like Google Classroom. So if you're on a Mac, um, a lot of times it defaults to the Safari browser. Um, if you're on a Windows machine, it might give you Internet Explorer or Firefox, or those could actually be on any devices. But with these products, you need to use a Chrome browser. When you open a Chrome browser, there are two different spots that you can log in. You can log into your Google account. So I'm actually going to open up a new tab here. So you can log into your Google account. You can see I'm logged in. There's the little thumbnail picture of me. If you don't have a picture associated with your account, it might just have your first initial there. Um, but you can also log into the browser itself. So this one on the actual Google page shows that I'm logged into Google. This one at the very top shows that I'm logged into my browser. And that's what kind of holds on to your bookmarks. Um, so you can actually log into a browser on a different device anywhere in the world with an internet connection and access your bookmarks and anything that you have saved on your browser, not just on your Google account. You know, it's a little confusing, but there is a, a little bit of a difference there. So when I say a Chrome extension, it's actually something that attaches itself to your browser. And so what that means is that you can log into that browser, like I said, from anywhere. And that Chrome extension that can do, and there's extensions that can do all sorts of things, but we'll talk about text -to speech right now, that will work with anything that shows up within that browser. So I wanna show you what that means, because I know it sounds a little confusing. Let me go back over here. So this very first link here under uh, read text aloud is called read aloud a text to speech voice reader. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to open up what's called the Chrome Web Store. So my Chrome Web Store is kind of like the same as your iTunes Store or your Google Play Store. Um, so it's kind of just houses all of the additional apps and extensions that um, can work with Chrome. So here it, it comes right up because I had it, I had it bookmarked, so right to this read aloud. And if it was something you weren't sure about, you could read about the overview here. It will tell you what it does. It gives you reviews, support, and other related uh, apps or extensions that might go with it. It tells you that the topic is accessibility, and it tells you that there's a million plus users of this particular extension, which is quite a bit. Some of them you'll see if they're brand new or if they're not that great, you know, it only might have a handful, but this one has a significant amount. So to add this so that I could use it, I'm just gonna click this add to Chrome button here. So it's asking me if I'm sure I wanna add it. I'm gonna click add extension. And I, you can see it pops up on the side of my browser on the top here. So it's almost like its own separate bookmark bar. Okay, so now let's see how this works. I'm gonna jump into my Google Classroom here and let's see, I'm gonna find an assignment and it doesn't have to be an assignment, it will read everything. I just think it will make a better um, example here. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight my text here and I'm gonna click this extension. Choose your favorite ice cream flavor. Let's see what we all agree on. Okay, so it reads the text for me. There is a settings button here. So you can choose options like the speed or the pitch of the voice. Sometimes it sounds like a little um, mechanical and you know, so playing with those different features can kind of help that a little bit. Um, also, depending on your student's needs, you might need it to be real slow, you might need it to be at a normal speed and pitch. Totally up to you. You could also choose whose voice you want to hear. So um, that I guess was Alex. Let's try Anna. <laughs> 
Riyad Alut ist eine Chrome und Firefox Erweiterung, oh, die Textbuchstechnologie verwendet, um Webseitentext <lacht> in Audio umzuwandeln. Es funktioniert okay, auf so einer Vielzahl von Websites. So Anne is translating for us. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll stick to English. There we go. All right. So as you can see, either way, it does read anything aloud, uh, aloud for you. It also works outside of the Google Classroom. So let's see if I go to, I'm just going to pull up CNN um, and go to an article. Let's see. It's probably not the news we want to hear right now, but let's give it a try just to get an example. So it takes a little bit longer. Um, if we highlight the text, I believe it will, let's see, I think it will go a little bit quicker here. Slowing down a little bit. Carlos Davis used to have about 200 clients drop by his C-U-T-O-L-O-G-Y barbershop in Albany, Georgia, every day. Okay. So you can see that, let me get out of there. So you can see that it will read aloud from any website. And that's the difference of it being on your browser versus being in your browser, if that makes sense. Um, again, any questions at all, please make sure that you write them in the chat box. Okay. So that was read aloud. And... We also have read and write for Google Chrome. Now this one is exceptional. It has a ton of features on it. The only thing that I don't love about this is that all of the bells and whistles are paid features. And I feel like at this point, there's so many options that you have for free that there really isn't a need to pay for something unless your student has something so, so specific. But if you're just looking for a read aloud feature, um, you shouldn't need to pay for it at all. So again, I clicked on it. It brought me to the Chrome web store. I'm going to add to Chrome. I'm going to give it permission. We'll see it pop up on the top corner of my screen here. And we can go and see if we could give it a try here. So this one gives you a toolbar across the top. Choose your favorite ice cream flavor. Let's see what we all agree on. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, cookies and cream, mint chip, turn in. So what's nice about this is it's highlighting too as it's, as it's speaking so that the student can see exactly which word is being spoken. Again, this one as well has the ability to slow it down, to change the voice, um, speed it up if necessary. And then, like I said, they do have these premium features where you can highlight and add notes and um, do all these fancy things with it. But if you're just looking for a read aloud service, um, this is fine for free. Those other things, um, again, specifically, you could probably find for free. Um, but if you want it all in one place and you want to pay for it, it's something to consider. The only thing I will say is that some school districts actually already pay for the product. So before you purchase anything, make sure that it's not already available to you from your school district. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah, the link is in the chat. Um, I'll put it in again so that you have it. And we'll also post it at the end of the sessions because I know like the chat box is kind of moving. So as um, it, it might kind of get lost, but um, at the end of the session, I will definitely repost the link and I believe the library will be able to post it as well. I'll also give you a link to my email and my Facebook page and I'll post it there as well. So you'll definitely have access to it. Okay, perfect. So the library can post it. Okay, so um, captioning tools. Now this is actually not an extension, it's an outside 
uh, website called Web Captioner. And you could actually start captioning right on the spot. So what's interesting about this though, is that you obviously, um, I'm trying to find the, there we go, start captioning right here. So what's interesting about this is it actually is meant to caption voice. So if you were to use this, what I would do is I would actually pull this tab out. So you could, if you hold left click on a tab on your, um, on your browser and drag it out, you could actually separate it so that you can have the one tab on the side of the screen and then you can start captioning. So if a teacher is speaking, it's giving you the captions live as they're watching whatever the teacher is showing them on the screen. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> okay, so again, this is an outside website, but an amazing tool to be aware that it exists. Um, a very, very cool feature. In addition to this, and this is not actually on the list, but um, Google Slides actually now has a captioning tool. I'm going to actually open that for you quick. So um, I'm just going to take one of the templates to show you what it looks like. So Google Slides is the equivalent of, of Google's PowerPoint, and um, it's to make presentations with. So if somebody is presenting on Google Slides and they're in present mode here, it actually gives the presenter the ability to have captions. So right here, there's a captions link and it will caption as the presenter is speaking and nobody needs to be typing, it automatically picks it up. So that is just something good to be aware of as well. Um, I do have to say there are some, you know, there are some downfalls to some of the captioning tools. Obviously, if you mumble or it doesn't hear something clearly, it's not always 100%. They are pretty good and they're getting better every single day. Danielle, um, there's a question um, of if it only captions in real time or can you caption a previously recorded video? There are captioning services um, that actually will caption a previously recorded video as well. Um, you know what, if you don't mind, I don't have that on right off the top of my head, but it actually is, I have it um, in my email. So if that's something, what I could do is I could actually add that to the document um, later on. And if you have the link to the document, you could visit the document and will appear. So, um, but there are services that definitely do that and for free. So um, that actually just came up recently. I should have put that on there, I apologize. Great question. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down right now um, to add that to the document as soon as we are finished. Okay. All right. So I also added a, um, a list here for enhancing readability. So it's not just students who may have a hard time um, and need to be read to but maybe there's other things going on. So this first one called Mercury Reader is actually, it eliminates ads and other distractions. So if you're reading, especially like these news articles and stuff, and they have like, you know, a video playing on one side and they have, you know, 47 ads on the other side and shoes you were looking at the day before and an ad on, <laughs> on the one side of the page, it becomes really, really difficult to read just an article because it's distracting. And a lot of students have difficulty with that. So what Mercury Reader does, it actually eliminates all of the distractors on the page and just pulls out the text of the article. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And again, the link brings us right to the Chrome store here. 
and I'm going to add it to Chrome. Okay, so it popped up here and I'm going to go right back to the news article just because it is a good example. Okay, so you can see, um, give it a second to load up. There's like, you know, things, other links on the side of the page and see there's some ads will pop up here, I'm sure. Still loading up. Yeah, see, we got we got ads popping up on the side. So if I click this Mercury Reader and give it a second, it actually. Whoop. I love Audible because it's a lot of stress relief. It's a great yeah, escape. Video so many great song. stories. Uh, from amazing people. It makes me want to be better. It changes your perspective. It makes you a different person. There we go. Okay. So it did pull out, um, it pulled out just the article, if you can say. It was still playing a video, but I just muted it um, because it's still reacting off of the web page that it's pulling the article from. But it, it did get rid of all of those distractors and all of those advertisements around the sides of the article, which makes it much, much easier for a student to read. Okay. So the next one I have here is for dyslexia. Um, this one, again, will work in any, with any website, including Google Classroom. So I'm going to load that one up, show you what it looks like. It's a little slow today. Sorry about that. All right, while that's loading, maybe we'll try another one too. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So it's called Open Dyslexic Font. I'm going to add it to my Chrome bar. Click add, add extension, and here we go. It popped right up for me. And I'm gonna go to my Google Classroom. And so for a child or anyone who's dyslexic, this can be really, really difficult to read this kind of font and all the clutter here. So once I click on Open Dyslexic, you can, let me move this out of the way. Um, you can enable it by toggling this button here and you'll see that it actually reloads and changes the font. So that is, could be the matter, you know, it could be the difference between a student being able to read it and not, which is pretty incredible that that feature is there um, and that we have that ability. There's also one, let me just turn it back off. So you can toggle it on and off. So perhaps if you have two children at home and one needs the service and one doesn't, you can leave that extension on your, um, on your browser and toggle it on and off depending on which student is using the computer at that time. Okay. Here's an app for color blindness. And this lets you, it allows you to change the um, the color schemes to suit the student's needs. So let's go here. And it asks you actually to select what is um, the least visible here and it will adjust it based on what colors you see and have difficulty seeing. So um, for me, I'm not colorblind, so it would be difficult for me to set this up right here. But just so you know that those services are there and that you can adjust it and it will adjust the screen. So if, um, I don't know, maybe I'll just do this and I'm just messing with it so that you can see and I could hit, oh, I hit reset and it changed it back. Um, but you can see as I actually adjust the screen, it should change colors. Let's see. 
there we go. It's a little subtle, but it is working. There we go. So you can see it changes. It changes the contrast. It changes the um, the boldness. And again, it has a toggle on and off switch. So if you have multiple students using the computer, you could turn it on for one student and off for another. This one, um, Lip Surf, I thought was so cool. This, you could actually control the computer with your voice. So this one, I'm gonna give you an example. Okay. Um, please also, if there is a service that or an accessibility feature that I have not addressed, please let me know. Um, because I want to make sure that I covered it all. I'm trying to do like a little bit of a variety here, but I know every student is different and every child has their own needs. And if there's something that you're specifically looking for that I didn't address, um, I want to be able to help you out. Even if it's not something I know off the top of my head, I will find out and make sure that I get you the information as soon as possible. Um, I don't want anybody walking away feeling like they didn't get what they needed um, by attending today. So I'm going to add this to Chrome. And I did play around with this. Let's see, this was kind of fun to use. Oh, I didn't sign in. Okay, so it's asking you your language. It has multiple languages. And you could see it's actually captioning for me as I'm speaking. So now with this, I have to remember um, if how to use it. There's, there's all, when you first log in the very first time, it actually gives you a list of commands to use. Um, Look at this. So I asked for a list of commands and they popped up on the screen. So I only played around with it briefly, but um, it did. Um, it does give you all of those commands. So I could do please zoom in. Or, there we go. Can you zoom in more? Zoom out. Zoom out more. Click on English UK. It'll work. I don't know if it'll work from there. Stay. Um, scroll down. Scroll down more. Scroll up. Open up a new tab. Go to google.com. Oh, I need to upgrade for that. <laughs> All right. Well, some of it, it did work in um, Google Classroom with clicking too. So you could say, you know, click, oh, here we go. Click Google Classroom sign in. And there we go. So I'm going to disable this now because it's going to drive me bananas if I'm trying to use it while I'm teaching. <laughs> um, but but the access is there. Um, so okay, so I see we have a question. Um, visually impaired font enlargement and contrast. Okay, so that can actually be done um, right on your device. Um, the contrast and the um, enlargement can both be done right from your device. So I, what device do you use? Do you have a, um, an Apple or a PC or a Chromebook? I'm on a MacBook right now. 
So I'll show you what it looks like on here, but all of those devices now offer um, Oh yes, if you do it on your device, it, it will carry over. So I'm gonna show you, good, cause I'm on an Apple too. So I'll show you what it looks like. Um, if you go to your launch pad <clears throat> and you click on system preferences, there's actually an accessibility tool right here. So I'm gonna double click that. So right here, you can have the zoom feature. And this is also accessible on the iPad and the phone. I believe on the iPad and the phone, if you, enable the zoom feature and you touch it with three fingers, it zooms, but it zooms drastically. I don't know how much, um, you know, how large you want the increase, um, but you could actually adjust that as well. So you can enable um, keyboard shortcuts for that as well. So command plus will, will zoom your screen in and command minus will zoom it out. And the display too. So you can do color filters here. You can do, um, let's see. There's all the different voiceover, um, even the type, your cursor size. Um, here's increased contrast. So you can see that that enabled and that worked right on the screen. Okay. And so also for everyone else, all of these other features are here as well, right in on your device. Um, you have a voice control option right on your device. You have different ways to make your accessible, your keyboard more accessible. They even make devices that can plug into your computer that will enable Braille, um, which is incredible to me. And there's actually Chrome extensions for Braille. Um, I couldn't demonstrate those because I don't have the attachment device to show you, but, um, but they are available. Yes. Yeah. So you can tell it to zoom. Yep. Um, your pointer control. So again, like even if you have a student maybe with, um, you know, issues with motor skills, you can change the way that your mouse clicks or the way that how it moves. Does it move fast? Does it move, you could slow it down. All of those things can be your appearance, light or dark. All of these can be adjusted to meet the, um, the needs of your, your students. So yeah, enable voiceover. Not only that, but I hate, hate to jump around a lot here, but, um, I want to show you too in Google Docs. So if you are using where are my docs, it's odd. <laughs> All right, let's just do it this way. Okay, I am going to make a copy. Uh, do a new document here. And I wanna show you too, that there's actually accessibility features in the in Google Docs as well. So, um, nope. Hang on, I have to switch accounts again. This is what happens when you have multiple accounts. Is it gonna let me? Okay, it's not gonna let me switch again, so that's okay. So um, you could actually go to get add-ons here and you could add features directly to your Google Docs. Now that's different than your Google extension. You're um, adding here is called an add-on. And when you get an add-on from here, it only works within the document. But if you go under tools, so there's certain add-ons that work like the extensions do that are only suitable for Google Docs, but then they also have accessibility settings right under tools here. So they have a screen reader 
uh, support, they have a screen magnifier. And then again, if you go to that, uh, that add-on, you can actually add more depending on what it is that you're looking for. So there's a lot out there. All right. Any cool more questions so far? Okay, let me go back to full screen here. Okay, a couple things that I wanted to point out too is make sure that you have open communication with your special ed department and your teacher in, in school. Um, many schools already pay for a lot of services and those bells and whistles, like a lot of those, um, like read, read, write, um, am I saying it right? The read and write for school, for a Google classroom. So that's one of those that are free, but then it has like those, you know, upgrade purchases. Um, but a lot of your schools already purchase those extra features and it's sometimes it's not communicated well. So before you purchase anything, always ask, um, not just your classroom teacher, but I would call ahead right to you, the special education department, and they can let you know if that's purchased because sometimes it might be purchased for one student who has it on their IEP um, and other students don't know that it's there. So especially now where students' needs are changing a little bit with distance learning, you wanna make sure that um, that you're getting everything that the school is already paying for and that you're not paying for it yourself if you don't need to be. Um, with that said, if it's on your child's IEP, even though you're home, the student need, the school district needs to provide reasonable accommodations for your child. So even if it's not something that they already have or have purchased, inquire about it because if it's meeting the needs of your student, then it's something that the school district might have to provide for you anyway. And if it's not on your IEP and they tell you that, you can always ask for an amendment to your IEP and have it included. So there's so much out there that's free that I wouldn't, I would do a lot of research before purchasing anything because I really don't think that um, for most cases that you really need to purchase. I did list a whole bunch of resources here as well. And we still have plenty of time. So again, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to um, let me know. But there are a whole, a whole bunch of uh, resources that I added. And I tried not to overwhelm because I know like, you know, if you get a list of 100 resources, then, you know, you might click on two or three and then it becomes overwhelming. So I tried to really pull the ones out that I felt were really important. Um, and I tried to do it for a variation of different device because you know we're all kind of on, we're not all on the same type of device. So we wanna make sure that these features are gonna work across the board. And if they don't, that we know which ones work for which devices. So that's what these articles here address. So I can show you and browse through them a little bit and then, oh, oh no, I just did this. And this is what happens. It's possible. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that link. So that's what happens. 24 hours, the link is gone. I just checked it yesterday. Okay, so Shake Up Learning um, has, here we go, uh, accessible accessibility tools, right, for all learners. And they list different shortcuts, they list different, um, here's text to speech. So a lot of the stuff that I went over, um, but there might be some other features on there that I didn't address. And um, just a little bit more specific types of things. Um, you know, I tried to do a little bit more of a variety. Obviously, if you're thinking about a specific student or a specific um, user, you're thinking about a specific need and you want more information that's a little bit more detailed. So rather than just a broad overview. So these resources and they have links in here will kind of help you delve, dive a little deeper into the specific uh, accessibility tool that you're looking for. So this is a Chrome Web Store accessibility list. So I went um, and I searched accessibility extensions. And again, I showed you a handful of them today, but these are the ones that are highlighted 
through the Chrome store. And you can go back and look at them. Again, it depends on your students' needs. I wouldn't overwhelm and do too many um, because it can get a bit much. But if there's something specific that's going to aid your student and make this transition to digital learning, distance learning a little bit easier, then by all means, these are here for you. And like I said, most of them are free. Um, some of them have paid upgrades, but um, they, you know, at least could get you started. Okay, so there's a whole bunch here. So that's something to explore. Um, okay, so tools for Microsoft users. I didn't really address that much. Um, it's hard for me to demonstrate. I am on an Apple right now and we are demonstrating Google products, but a lot of you are PC users and you do have accessibility features right on your devices as well. And if you use Microsoft tools, you also have accessibility features. So these are all listed here, different learning tools, reading mode, um, ease of access, all of these. Um, these, and it gives you all different ways to use Microsoft per, uh, products with their accessibility features. Finally, I have here, it's an article from the Department of Education. And this I thought was appropriate uh, to bring up and to share with you because it's about providing services to children with disabilities during this whole outbreak. And it was just written last month. So it is completely current and it is straight from the Department of Education. So we know it's legit um, and it's updated. So I think this is important um, for parents and students who are entitled to certain services. And um, it's always wise to be aware of what you're entitled to and what the school district um, should be providing you, regardless of whether you're physically in the building or learning from home. Um, and this lays all that out for you. A lot of it has that, you know, like legal terminology. It's not like light reading, <laughs> but if you're looking for a specific answer, it is thorough and it does give you the information you need if you want to ask the school district for more services. Um, so it's just a nice link to have access to to answer some of those questions and kind of be prepared, especially if you're um, preparing for an annual review meeting or want to address that. Sure. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? So, Danielle, it looks like somebody has their um, hand raised. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Is that... I'm wondering if I sh should open them up to allow to talk. Is that okay? That's okay with me. If, if okay. All right. I'm trying to unmute them, but. Maybe, can I do it? No, I don't have. I'll do it, hold on. Oh, it looks like it's unmuted now. Hi, did you have a question? Okay, maybe they don't have a question. Okay, okay. maybe, yeah. Sometimes you could click the hand by accident or, um, okay. But I encourage, again, if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free. So we have about 12 minutes left. Um, and I will also address um, these links that I put on the top. The other thing that I wanted to mention was the document here that I um, shared the link to that I'm working off of is what you call a live document. So it's a Google doc. And because you have that link, I can change it as we speak and you'll see the changes right away. 
So if you have it open on your screen and I start typing, you're going to see me typing. Um, with that said, I can always add to it. So I want to obviously make sure that I correct that link on the resources. And like I said, I promise I checked it last night and it worked and today it doesn't. So I got to figure out why and I will correct it because I'm sure the information is still there. Um, actually, I may even try to Google it. So it was Google, what did it say? Um, I'm just gonna copy and paste it, it's easier. Um, let's see. So most of these um, big companies, these computer companies that are providing sources and material for education right now have um, directions and information on ways to make things accessible. And I do have to say when I was researching this a little bit more recently, there's a lot more for educators on how to create a classroom that's accessible for everyone, which was great to see because at least they're aware that they kind of have to make it accessible from the start. It's not that we're creating classrooms that are not accessible and then trying to figure out how to make them accessible for a special needs case. Um, so it would, you know, it is a nice kind of shift in mindset to actually create the classroom to begin with as an accessible place for students. Um, so this is, um, a list of, um, Google's accessibility services that they offer. And there's also links in there as well. So I'm actually, as we speak, going to change the link on the document here. And, um, so this way that you have access to it right away. Okay, so that should work now. Okay, so like I said, I can change the document live as we're working on it. Um, so with that said, I am gonna continue to add to this document and my email and my Facebook page are listed right at the bottom of the document. Um, so, and the, the library is also gonna post the document. So as this um, evolves a little bit more, if there's questions, at any point, you can email me or message me on my Facebook page and I can always add resources to this page. Um, I encourage you to share it with anybody else who may find it useful. Um, we're kind of all trying to scramble to make things as easy for our students as possible, whether they need accessibility tools or not. Um, so any kind of resources that we can put our heads together and come up with is beneficial to everyone. So I don't mind sharing that. And um, I do also wanted to show you, so I think I, did I click on this one already. I did click on that one. Here is, um, these are resources. It's, it focuses on an iPad. But again, it kind of goes through and iOS between the iPhone and the iPad and the Mac is all really, really similar. So once you can kind of navigate one, you can usually, usually do the other, but you can actually click here by vision. And it goes through here what happens on your screen with voiceover. Um, navigate your screen with voiceover. It can describe images to you, which is amazing. Virtually control with voiceover. Here's the braille display that I was talking about. Um, hear the way you say it. Hear details, everything. I, I mean, it, it does so, so, so much. So all of those, here's your Zoom, your font adjustments, your magnifier. Um, so all of those different features are there and this will give you a guide to how to access them and set them up for, your, for you or your student. Again, the same with hearing. Um, you could actually stream directly to hearing aids if your hearing aids are Bluetooth capable. Um, it gives you all these different um, different features to use, here's your closed captions, 
um, balancing audio. So if you have hearing, um, different hearing in one ear than the other, it can actually balance it for you, which is just incredible that it has that capability, mobility. And then there's also learning. So I really, really encourage you to explore what your own particular device actually can offer you because there's a lot there. And lastly, here we have the, um, we have Chromebook and Chromebook again is a Google product. So it's meant to kind of work seamlessly with all that, but there's a ton of accessibility features as well here. So a lot of the same things that we've seen, size, screen magnifier, screen reader, you don't even need the extensions for these highlight cursor and text, which is nice. That's the thing, you know, it will highlight as it reads along, or you can highlight things as you read along. There's high contrast mode, um, adjusting your cursor size, and as well as the braille support that I had mentioned. Okay, so all these links are again on this document for you, and I will continue to add and share them. There is also, I'm going to be participating and I'll pull up the information for you. I'm going to be running a, an office hour, like open office hours program. So um, let me pull up some of the library programs here. Uh, oh, I clicked on the wrong one. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go. So if you look at the, um, the library newsletter online, I'm going to on Thursday at 6.30 and also the following Thursday at four, I'm going to have open office hours. So those I'm not going to be running a specific specific program like from start to finish like I did today like we're not going to be covering you know cover to cover so to speak I'm going to just be available for questions and answers for one-on-one -on -one help so you don't have to attend for the whole hour you can kind of pop in ask a question you can attend for the whole hour um, I will be giving like slight overviews of things so you know there's always more to learn a lot of times I learn just from working with other patrons. Um, so if you do have any questions about what we went over today, please join me during those office hours. Again, Thursday at 6.30 and then the following Thursday at 4. I will also be updating the document. I'm going to put the link in the chat one more time. Okay, so that's the document I worked off of today. I will be adding the, um, the captioning tool that we discussed. Um, I actually have a list of a few of them that you can, you can also do it through YouTube. If you upload a video through YouTube, they do have a captioning, um, a captioning device there where you can add it to your video. Um, but if you don't want it on YouTube, there are definitely other applications that you can use to do that. Are there any other questions? We have a couple minutes left and I just wanna make sure that everybody kind of got um, an overview of what they were looking to learn. And if there's anything else that I can add, or even if we don't have time now to go deep into something, is there something you would like to see? Is there something you would like added to this document um, or even something discussed for the, with, during office hours? Please don't hesitate. I am here to help you out, to support you. This, it, it's been a crazy ride. And uh, I wanna make sure that all of our students have that support that they need. I'm going to put up again, here's my email and Facebook page. And there's a question um, on the chat. Sure, absolutely. So yeah, the with the open office hours, I'm going to spend a lot more time on just like specific questions. So things that you personally have run into and have a question about, I wanna be here. And even if I don't know the answer 
right off the top of my head. Um, I'm pretty savvy. We'll explore it together. And I will always find you the answer one way or the other. Um, even if it's something, you know, I can't answer right then and there, I will research it and get back to you. But um, I can definitely help you with the Google read and write on, on the Chromebook. Absolutely. Any other questions? Um, do you actually have, do you have the basic subscription? Do you do, do you, do you have a subscription on the Google read and write, or you just were looking to use the, the basic, uh, free version for now? Either way, we can work on it and we can explore it. Um, and you could let me know, you know, specifically what you want to get out of it and what, you know, you're, what you're using it for the most. And we can figure out how to set it up so that it's most accessible for you. Okay. So we are just about out of time. I really, really appreciate everyone joining me today. I hope I was able to at least give you an idea of some of the things that were out there. And again, I hope to see you during office hours. You have my email up on the screen right now. So if any questions come up, please don't hesitate to email me or send me a message. Um, I really want to make sure that everybody out there kind of has the help and the resources they need so that nobody's struggling. Um, okay, perfect. So you do, the school does provide it, which is awesome. And, and that you're aware of it, which is even better. So yes, we will, we will definitely explore that during office hours. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. And, uh, again, I, you know, if anything comes up, please don't hesitate to get in touch and let me know.